So as I explained to you in the last video, a region is associated with a track and that region is connected to an audio file. Then on a track, you can right click on it for extra options. For example, maybe you wanna remove it, duplicate it, or even change the color, add some comments, or set the inputs and outputs. So you do have some extra options here on the track. And if you double click the name, you can rename it. On each track, you've got a record arm, a mute, a solo. This is to assign it to a playlist. Then you can view the automation of this button and then check the grouping or set up a group with this. But we'll get into these throughout the series. Now I've got the grab tool selected and that allows me to select a region and move it around. And then on a region, you can trim the start or the end. And notice as I'm doing that, this is non-destructive. It's not changing the audio. So the audio is housed within this region and you're just moving it around and changing the start and end locators. And you can see as you're moving a part around, it's showing you the time code position for the start of that point. So that's pretty handy, especially if you're working to video and you want to spot some regions or audio files to that video then you can use this and it works very accurately. And seeing as I just sort of spoke about the tools, let's quickly look at some of these other tools. Here, I've got the Smart enabled. I'm gonna turn this off and then first go through these other tools. As I showed you, that is the drag tool. This is the range tool. Now, if you select this, you can select a range. Maybe you wanna delete that area over there by making a range selection and removing it. Then next to this is the time stretch. Maybe you want to time stretch some of your audio. But I'm not going to do that right now. I just wanted to show you what that tool is. Next to this is the draw mode. You can use this to draw in automation on your clips. And we will get into automation later in the series. And then finally, you've got your internal edit mode. And this is where you edit the automation points and when you edit your MIDI node data. Now, going back to the Smart Tool, if I select this Drag Tool and select the Smart Tool, this actually bundles two tools in one. At the bottom here, I've got the Grab Tool, and then at the top, I've got the Range Tool. So this is quite a nifty just way of working between your editing and just really helps speed up your workflow. I know a lot of guys have come from other DAWs and are probably used to having a Smart Tool like this, so it's really handy. And just to demonstrate this in more detail, on a track, you can change the track height. So I'm just gonna increase this just to show you exactly what it's doing over here. So drag tool, range tool. So drag tool, range tool. There you go. And another thing I forgot to point out, on a track, you can see if I extend that out, you've also got a volume fader for that track. And you'll see this in more detail when you get into the mix window. Then following on from the tools over here, you can snap the regions to a interval on the grid. So at the moment I've got quarter notes, I can choose bar and now it's gonna snap to each bar or you can choose different intervals over here going down all the way to 128th notes. But for now, let's just leave it at quarter notes. Then this nudges audio. You can see that's nudging it around, nudging it back and forth. And that's just showing you the distance with the nudge. So it's nudging it at that distance. If I increase that, you can see that jumps bigger nudge values. So maybe you can go to a very fine value to really do some small nudging on your audio regions. Then up here, you've got your timeline. And when you click on this, you're choosing where your playhead is. So wherever you have this placed is where it's gonna start playback. Place it somewhere else and play back. And try again. Awesome. And you can see you've got two views that show you the running of your song or session. Here, the playback, you can see there's this position here, which is your playhead, and that is the time it's moving along. 
you've got your start marker and your end marker. Now we'll get into markers a bit later in a later video. And then there's this bottom view over here that you can also use to navigate. But to see how this really works, let me first zoom in. So here is your horizontal zoom. You can choose to zoom in to fit one track or all the tracks. And then here is your vertical zoom. So let's zoom in quite close, maybe a minute. Now, if I play back, I can use this to drag around in the arrangement area. So just some nice ways to navigate around your project. Let's go back here and choose zoom to session. Awesome. Maybe bring that end marker in. We don't really need that all the way there. That's just easier. And what I find quite handy is if you use the minus and plus sign, those help you zoom in and out horizontally very fast. So that's just a really quick way of navigating around instead of just jumping to these. That just gives you a quick rundown of the editor. I haven't covered the transport as I'm going to cover that next. And then this section here contains more details on the bars, meters, markers, loop points, and so on. So I will go through each of these throughout the series. So next up, let's take a look at these functions on the transport panel.